Zaid was born Don Smith in Brooklyn, New York in 1946. Growing up in a low-income household during the Civil Rights Movement, America was a heavily segregated nation at the time, rife with racism, institutionalized segregation, and denied opportunities to even the most talented individuals. His father, Bert Smith, was a detective and also a photographer for Nelson Rockefeller, the governor of New York at the time. His mother's name was Juanita Louise Smith. His father and mother hardly spoke. Zaid's grandmother, Miss Hattie Coombs, provided him with schooling, discipline, and a good upbringing. She would reprimand him from going outside with the miscreants on the streets of Brooklyn. The streets of Brooklyn were notoriously fraught with gang activity, violence, and the notorious Italian Mafia. Zaid was surrounded by such bad influences from an early age and was institutionalized at the age of 16. After his release, he spent less time with bad friends and focused more on school. His father took him to Madison Square Gardens to watch a game. He told his father that he would play there one day. That prediction as a child came true when he scored 37 points against world champions New York Knicks in 1971 at Madison Square Gardens. He graduated from John Jay High School as a top ball player and was admitted to Iowa State University, which was one of the most prestigious colleges of the day. Acceptance to play college basketball was excellent news, especially for an African American during segregation in the 1960s. Even though Zaid was a top ball player, playing in the 1960s in an all-white college came with great struggle. He recalls that he carried a hidden anxiety that someone would call him the N-word one day. It happened one day that he walked out of his dorm and stepped on a letter which stuck to his shoe. He picked it up and read it. It was from his dorm mate's family that was wondering how he was getting along with the quote-unquote Negro. This era is noted for many great rivalries in basketball, both collegiate and professional. It also includes great rivalries such as Iowa State's strong game against Kansas and Will Chamberlain. The slam dunk was also banned in the NCAA, which was one of Zaid's early moves. In a game against Oklahoma State, Zaid threw the ball to a Peruvian player named Raul Duarte. Raul went in to make a layup and missed a shot. Zaid came down, goaltended the ball and dunked it. Oklahoma State coach Henry Iba got off the bench and yelled, that's goaltending, ref. That's goaltending. I want to make sure the dunk gets banned. I was on the NCAA Rules Committee and the dunk was banned the next year for seven or eight years. Most historians don't know that this began at Iowa State. Iowa State University basketball was arguably at its greatest during the 60s and 70s. Coach Glenn Anderson had the third most wins in the school's history. Coach Anderson led the Cyclones to six upper division finishes in the Big Eight, which set the stage for its predecessor, Fred Hoiberg. Zaid was 13th NABC All-American in 1968. He was also Big 8 Player of the Year in 1968. He had his jersey number 35 retired at Iowa State before starting his 10-year NBA career. Zaid was drafted into the NBA in 1968 as a first-round fifth overall pick to the Cincinnati Royals. He would go on to play in what some consider the heyday of the National Basketball Association. Zaid was drafted by the Cincinnati Royals. During his 10-year NBA career, he played for the Cincinnati Royals, Buffalo Braves, Milwaukee Bucks, Houston Rockets, Boston Celtics, and of course, the Seattle Supersonics. Zaid held the Seattle Supersonics record for the most consecutive field goals, which was broken only by Gary Payton. Zaid scored 12. Gary Payton scored 13. Along with Jim Fox and Bob Rule, he is only one of three players to have 12 rebounds in a single quarter. He still ranks sixth amongst the Seattle Supersonics in rebounding per minute. He averaged 19 defensive rebounds and 11.3 rebounds for the Seattle Supersonics in the 1971-1972 season. 
He scored a total of 155 double-doubles in his NBA career and still leads the Supersonic and field goal percentage per 36 minutes, 3.8 defensive rebounds, and, and 2.4 blocks. He helped take the Sonics to the 1976 playoffs after years of stagnation. He was also in the playoffs with the Bucks and the Rockets. Zade played with and against some of the greatest in NBA history. He was teammates with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar during his time with the Bucks and started a volleyball team with Wilt Chamberlain. He was one of the few players who could stop Wilt and block his shots. He was also one of the few players that dunked on Wilt Chamberlain. Slam Magazine included Zade in the 500 greatest players of all time. He was also in Eddie Doucette's film called Countdown to a Dream. In some of Zade's career he is known as Don and sometimes as Zade. This is because Zade converted to the peaceful region of Islam and changed his name from Don Smith to Zade Abdulaziz, which means the servant of the mighty God. The people of the world understood the true peaceful nature of Islam at the time, and it was the fastest growing religion in the world at the time. Zaid makes it clear in his life that Islam is a peaceful religion. Anyone who believes in the oneness of God and Muhammad as his messenger can consider themselves Muslim. On one occasion, a group of his Hindu fans came from India to visit him. When they saw him, they all bowed to him at once with their heads on the floor. Zaid politely told them to get up and not to bow to him, but only to bow to God. He would take breaks to pray five times a day, and even fast in Ramadan during games. He said that people thought he would play weary, but were surprised to see that he actually had more energy while fasting. Zaid completed the pilgrimage to Mecca, known as the Hajj. He did not live the fast-paced lifestyle of the NBA as many might think, but instead made a monogamous marriage and raised six children. Zaid lives in the greater Seattle area as a professional drug and alcohol counselor. He rallies for bringing back the Supersonic to Seattle, which he believes will happen after the hockey stadium is built. After selling his waterfront property on Vashon Island, an apartment complex, he enjoys time in his office and promoting his autobiography, the book Darkness to Sunlight.